So today uh, I'll be talking to you about integrating business objects with Power BI. Uh, and we're going to look at the features that were recently introduced with uh, Infoburst to facilitate that. Uh, just a bit about me, uh, my role at InfoSoul for the past 15, 16 years uh, has been as what we'll call a product support manager. I'm all things InfoBurst. Um, uh, I'll assist our users with uh, evaluating the product, uh, implementation, training, uh, troubleshooting, everything about InfoBurst, me and my team uh, are there to uh, assist our users. <clears throat> And if you'd like to reach out uh, at any time, there's my email address. I'm always here for uh, questions and comments. <clears throat> okay. So uh, InfoBurst for years has been servicing um, uh, business objects in terms of uh, uh, report and data delivery uh, that then evolved into uh, data management from business objects for things like Excelsius dashboards, custom, um, uh, web applications and now squirrel dashboards uh, and in the last few years uh, we've had a real focus on um, tableau so taking infoburst into the tableau world to allow tableau users to um, extract data from business objects deliver it as hyper to tableau server uh, and then burst and deliver their tableau workbook so as the bi landscape is evolving infoburst is is keeping pace and trying to service those needs so in in recent months, uh, we've seen a, a fairly healthy uptick um, of business objects, users interested in finding a way to get data out of business objects, leverage that investment in their Webby reports, um, in the, their universe logic, and get that data into Power BI. Uh, that seems to be a really um, uh, popular direction right now. So. Um, we, uh, the InfoBurst development team, started looking at this, I think, middle of last year. And uh, in no October of 2021, we introduced a version of InfoBurst uh, called Power or InfoBurst PBI, Power BI. Uh, and with this version, uh, for those InfoBurst users interested, that was InfoBurst 2021.4. This version introduces the ability to schedule um, a refresh of either a Webby report a direct universe query if you don't have a Webby report, and then deliver that refresh data as a Power BI data set to Power BI server. And then from there, you'll, you'll design your um, Power BI dashboards. And then InfoBurst behind the scenes will refresh that data based on whatever schedule the user defines. So that's the bridge between business objects and Power BI, right? We're taking InfoBurst into that space and making that, that um, delivery of data possible for users. In addition to the ability to um, extract data from Webby, from a universe, uh, we can also pull data directly from a database query, stored procedure, any database, anything with ODBC connection, we can schedule those refreshes and get that data into Power BI. And then we've also got a number of users interested in pulling data out of uh, Excel files, right? Uh, Excel files stored in SharePoint or maybe on the network, transform that data so that it's usable in Power BI. All right, with that, let me show you what this looks like uh, in action. So first, let's take a look at a little sample Webby report. Um, so here, I want to extract this the data in this table. Uh, well, I want to refresh the Webby report, get current data, extract that, transform it into a, what's called a data set uh, for Power BI, and then deliver that to the Power BI server. So actually, let's stay here. So I'm going to move over to InfoBurst. Uh, I know, looking at the list, some of you are InfoBurst users. Uh, some of you are not. Um, so I'll try to keep this very high level. Um, but the process itself is very simple from a workflow perspective. So here I am in the, the InfoBurst user interface. Um, and what I'm doing as a user is creating what we call a workflow. The workflow you can think of as kind of a wizard that lets me as a user make decisions about where I want to get the data and then when and how I want to deliver it. So I'm going to filter this list down and look just at those workflows that apply to Power BI. So you can see there, we can pull data from Webby. Uh, the universe query is here. And then as I mentioned, we can also do database query, 
and Excel. We're not going to look at those today, but I will be showing you these two workflows today. All right, let's start with Webby. This seems to be the most popular uh, requirement among our users. So the first thing I'll do is go out and select a business objects, what we call a platform. This is my, my business objects environment. I happen to have a 4.3 environment here that I can use. So the first step is to simply go out and select our target document. I've got a folder called demo, and then within it, this is that city sales metrics report that I just showed you. So I select my report. Now, if the report happens to have prompts, we then could supply prompt values via this interface. For this simple example, there are no prompts, but just know that, that that's supported as well. So now I need to define uh, the destination. Where are we going to send the Power BI uh, data? Um, you can see Power BI server is uh, selected there automatically, but then we do need to select a target workspace. If you're not too familiar with Power BI, you can think of workspaces as basically folders, right? We're going to deliver content into a folder called a workspace. So I'm going to here go out and browse the Power BI platform, and I'm just going to deliver the Webby data set into this InfoBurst folder. That's our destination. Uh, now, those of you that are InfoBurst users know that we have this concept of macros. These macros allow us to do things like custom file naming. Uh, that's an option here. It's not a requirement, but I'll go ahead and do that just to show those of you that uh, aren't InfoBurst users what that looks like. So my goal here is not is to deliver a file to to, to Power BI, but have that file uh, have a custom name of my choosing. So these macros uh, are built into the product. There's hundreds of them, and they allow you to basically create dynamic things like file names. So here, I want a file name. Let's say that includes the document name. That's our doc name macro. And then I'll also include a formatted date stamp. So I'll say, give me today's date, and then I'll just give that, uh, let's do this. Something like that. OK, so destination is our Infoverse workspace in Power BI. Now, at this point, uh, we've got a few options with regards to Webby. On the right side, you can see here that there are two report tabs available in that Webby document. There's a summary tab, which I showed you, and then a detail tab. Uh, the detail tab's got all data, no charts. I want that. So I do have the ability here to pick and choose what tab ends up in the Power BI data set if there are multiple tabs in the document. Also, we've got the ability to pull data directly from the data provider. So if that data does not exist on the report tab, or you'd just like to pull that entire query result into a data set, you can do that. If there are multiple uh, data providers, you can pick which data provider will result in the data set. So you're not limited to what's on the report tab. You can pull uh, the data provider as well. OK, so that's our delivery. Next, we def define when this um, Webby report will be refreshed and delivered to Power BI server. Um, InfoBurst has a, a fully functional schedule uh, very standard schedule definitions are available. Very advanced definitions are available. Um, you know, I can schedule uh, specific days of the month, custom calendars. Uh, we can schedule at high frequencies. In this example, I'll just uh, select a standard, let's say, Monday through Friday at, uh, let's say, 6 AM in the morning, All right? <clears throat> so let's save that. And this workflow is done. That's all we need to do to prepare to get Webby into Power BI. Now I'm going to run this now just so you can see what that looks like. Um, so behind the scenes, InfoBurst is connecting to business objects. Uh, we're opening that Webby report. We're asking BO to refresh the data. We then extract that. We transform that into Power BI data set, and then we push it up to the Power BI server and the workspace uh, that we selected. Um, so once that finishes, we can switch over to Power BI and see what that looks like. So that bit is done. So here in the Power BI portal, I'll just do a quick refresh. We'll sort by refreshed. And there it is. So there's our um, formatted file name. So city sales metrics was the report name and then a formatted date stamp. Uh, and then from here, we can, let's just do this. We'll just create a quick report. Um, so I'm going to pull, let's say, city sales revenue. I think that gives me like a geo map. 
maybe I'll add a, I'm going to be honest, they're called pages in here. I'm switching back before Tableau and Power BI and what is a view there is a page here. So um, I don't know, let's pull in all of these. Actually, let's pull that guy out, something like that. We'll change that into a table, right? And then uh, maybe add, just add a little chart. Let's call this lines and maybe you want to see quantity sold. So it's super simple. So, you know, that's our, our Power BI dashboard. We publish it and then behind the scenes, Infoburst is automatically refreshing that data from business objects. So the, the, the process is seamless to the Power BI user, the designer and the consumer, right? It's all uh, automatic. Okay, so that's Webby. Um, let's switch over and show you what that process looks like for a universe query, because not all data that's in business objects uh, is necessarily available in a report. So you do also have the option to uh, craft and execute a direct universe query. And that's uh, this one here, universe to Power BI. Uh, I'll just stay on my 4.2 server here and I'll this actually might take a few moments. That server's been asleep for a while. Um, I'll select good old eat fashion. And from here, uh, we're going to do two things, potentially. We're going to define uh, the, the uh, dimensions and measures that will make up our universe query. So in this example, I'll say, give me, let's say, state, city, and store name. We'll select a product, we'll go lines, and then we'll add a few dimensions, excuse me, measures. Let's say revenue and quantity sold. Okay, so that forms our query. If necessary, we can uh, apply a filter to the query. And we'll do that here just so you can see what that looks like. So let's just say, um, I would like to refine the query result based on quantity sold. And we'd like to say, let's say greater than 1,000. Okay, craft the query, apply one or more filters if necessary. Uh, we do have the ability here to preview the query. So Infoverse will submit the query to business objects and return a real-time result so that we can validate that we've created uh, a query that returns the desired data, right? And once that's done, the process is exactly the same, right? We're going to select our target workspace. I'll put it in Infoburst. I won't do a custom name here, continue. We define our schedule, I could say, you know, on the first and 15th of the month, something like that. And that's it. So a different source in the query, but the exact same uh, workflow. Um, now, I know there are uh, um, uh, some Infoverse users on the, on the call today, uh, and I wanted to give you a few notes about what you're seeing because some of this may be very new to you. The, what I've just shown you, this interface is called the workflow in Infoburst. And this is something we designed, I'd say about a year ago now, uh, that's a way to present these, these workflows in Infoburst in a simplified way for, let's call them business users, people that don't have uh, maybe that power user knowledge of the application. It simplifies basically adding the data source, the Webby or the universe query, uh, configuring parameters and destinations, schedule, all of that is wrapped up into what we call a workflow. But under the covers, uh, for those Infoburst users, this is basically a burst, a document, a burst, and a schedule. Uh, the workflow itself, by definition, is simplified. We're not going to give you all the complexity of the burst and the schedule. We're trying to make that as simple as possible and give you uh, selection, the business user selections. But you could choose to say, okay, I want to, I want to leverage a burst and the power of a burst to create my uh, Power BI data set from Webby. So this is a burst that does the exact same thing as the workflow. It's got my city sales metrics report. Uh, it's got my delivery to Power BI server in, in the data set format. But here I can leverage more advanced features of the burst that some of you may be aware of. So for example, I can um, uh, apply actions that say, okay, based on the status of the job, go do something. So in this example, I want to let, let's say a group of, um, I don't know, Power BI uh, designers know that a set of data has been made available to them on Power BI. So what this action does is says, okay, when this job completes, go kick off this action, which will actually send a message to a, uh, in this case, a Microsoft Teams uh, support channel. 
right? So you might have designers that are in their own channel. We can automatically inform them via a, a message, a team, Slack, email, and let them know that data is available and they can go off and start their uh, design process. So just know that there are other features that InfoBurst use, users know of that you can leverage when you're working with uh, this, this business objects to Power BI uh, process. And that, that goes for scheduling as well. So some of the more advanced scheduling options like uh, basing your jobs on external events like uh, database queries or trigger files, all of that is possible um, when moving through this workflow of data from business objects transformed and delivered to uh, Power BI server. Um, let's see. Okay, let's go back to the slide then. Okay, so everything I've just shown you, um, if you're interested in sharing it with any of your coworkers, I think this this presentation will be available in video format at some point. But we also have a video video available that walks you through that basic process of taking uh, business objects data, scheduling it, and delivering it to Power BI server. Uh, uh, if you've got a QR code reader, you can scan that. I'll leave it up for just a moment. And that'll take you to our YouTube channel that has a, a nice little short three minute video that walks you through uh, that progress, excuse me, that process. Okay, so what's next for Infoverse? We've just introduced uh, in October, this new Power BI functionality, but we are already exploring um, an expansion of that functionality. So. Lots of users have come to us asking, you know, can Infoburst do for Power BI what it does for Webby, what it does for Crystal, what it does for Tableau workbooks in the form of refreshing and bursting, publishing in commodity formats and delivering to all the Infoburst destinations like email, like SharePoint, like FTP. That is actually in the works. <laughs> in fact, I'm getting a chat message from my developer. He's He's doing this work as we speak. So we're, we're, we're looking very closely at what Microsoft will support in way of Power BI publishing. Our hope is at the end of this process, we'll be able to offer some publishing solutions. And the idea being take a Power BI report dashboard uh, and uh, publish it in a format like PDF and deliver it to a destination like a SharePoint, like email. So our hope is to have some form of Power BI publishing available in our next version, which will be Infoverse 2022.2, which right now is slated for Q2 of this year. We're targeting uh, early to mid April. Um, so if you'd like to stay informed about this stuff, uh, we do have on the Infosol help desk, help.infosol.com, there's the address. You can go into our announcements form and add yourself as a follower. And when we release things like new versions, new features, we'll send out an automatic email to those uh, forum followers so you can get uh, uh, automatic notifications when this stuff comes out. And then we'll be, we push all of this stuff out on our Infoverse Twitter channel as well if you're a Twitter user. <clears throat> okay, with that, I'd like to open it up for questions. Hey, Brian, that was awesome. And um, I don't see any questions yet. There could be a couple come in. Um, but um, it is interesting to see the number of business objects customers who have um, moved uh, towards Power BI in the last um, 18 months. Um, we had seen this big surge of business objects customers move to Tableau, and that's kind of uh, plateaued at this point, and uh, we're seeing a big uptick now in, in BO customers moving to, uh, to Power BI. Um, and of course, they keep business objects for all of their um, operational reporting, BI reporting, and so forth, and then use tools like Tableau and Power BI for their data visualization and data exploration and so forth. So the flow you showed obviously is gonna be of great interest to those customers to make it really easy for them to leverage their existing investment in business objects and um, not have to recreate job flows uh, for their Power BI um, users. Instead, they can just leverage um, you know, the existing universes, existing Webby reports and, uh, and so forth. So that's great. So thank you so much um, for uh, uh, for that presentation. I still don't see any questions coming in. So I think everyone has got what they want at this point. So thanks a lot, Brian. We'll hand back to Lucy.